Hello folks, welcome in here to the heat and the grow room. Today I'm uh, sitting here making a um, iron solution, iron sulfate and water. It's a kind of uh, fertilizer I'm going to use on one of my tomato plants inside here in the grow room that um, shows very typical signs of uh, an uh, iron deficiency. As you can see here uh, in the top of the plant the new shoots and new leaves are very uh, light in color and I'm quite sure that uh, this is uh, iron deficiency. It looks like that. If you see the leaves further down here they are much darker green So I'm going to um, try to add some iron sulfate in the, um, in the water I gave it and see if it helps. It's my first try on this, so um, it's more like an experiment. And many people use uh, iron sulfate uh, to uh, get rid of moss in the lawn outside. And it also helps the grass grow much better. And, uh, get a nicer color. So um, I found a recipe on the net. I can't remember which website it was, but uh, they reckon a good solution is uh, about one gallon or uh, say a little bit over one gallon and four or four liters water to one one um, tablespoon of iron sulfate. As you can see here it's a weak green color to it. I'll put this in the water here. I'll come back to my um, plants a little bit later. I'm only gonna shake this first. Okay, I let this stand here a little while and then um, try to water my plants with, with uh, this solution here. Or I'll, I'll try it on that one plant because uh, none of the others shows any signs of this deficiency. Well, another thing I wanted to do today was to um, show my plants in the grow room here and how they are doing. And um, many of these plants that I'm growing here are soon going out in the greenhouse so I um, can get some space here to do my seedlings for this summer's crops. So come on join me. Well the first plant out is uh, a tomato plant. It's a crossing I made last year and it's uh, a cross between uh, Mennonite. That's a slicer and um, a cherry tomato called rose quartz. It's growing very nice and as you can see here uh, it's putting out flower buds already. And this one behind here is an uh, it's old, a very old uh, cherry tomato. I don't know the name of it. And this is the one that has uh, this lack of iron. But if you see further down the plant, here you can see the tomatoes. Here you can see the size. They are orange. They taste very nice and sweet. And um, this one here is a cross between uh, 
a big beef tomato and uh, a quite big sherry tomato. Uh, this sherry tomato, that's another one I don't know the name of, but it's orange as well. And it's growing very nice. Here you can see the flower buds. So um, we'll soon be having tomorrow's on this one. And those two here in front. Here you can see this uh, unripened tomorrow's or. Uh, <laughs> Maybe it's more right to say it's uh, some small tomatoes developing here after flowering. And these two here are crosses between uh, Cherokee purple and Mennonite. And both of them are big slicers. So I'm very curious to see um, what will come out of these crossings here. And uh, what the tomato will, will taste like. I'm looking very forward to that. They're growing very nice. They're putting out a lot of suckers here, as you can see. And uh, all the suckers from these two I've been using as uh, cuttings for new plants. And I have a load of them. You can uh, see them later. Um, these new plants I'm making of this F1 hybrids, I'm gonna give away to uh, neighbors and friends because I uh, have a lot of them and I haven't got the space enough to, uh, you know, grow every one of them. Behind here, there is, uh, let's see here, yeah, those. Those two here are crossings uh, between uh, Cherokee purple and uh, rose quartz, a cherry tomato and a slicer. And they are already starting to put out nice fruits. The fruits are a little bit larger than a cherry tomato, a little bit over an inch. And the other one is doing just the same. Very nice fruits. I like that the fruit, you know, is uh, what shall I say, broader than long, a kind of flat tomato. I like that. And here's a uh, seedling from an apple tree. Uh, the seedling came from a tree that's called a transparent blanche or something like that. And it's growing very well. It is about a half meter tall now. And I wonder what the fruits from that tree taste like. And here is a uh, chili pepper. I'm growing this one just for fun because uh, I, don't <laughs> I really don't like uh, chilies. But they're very nice and decorative plants. And here is chili plant number two. It is a little bit bigger than the other one. And uh, as you can see here, it has started to flower. Very nice plant. It's cool to see how it prunes itself, in a way, by uh, branching out in the top, like this. So I, I don't need to use my scissors here. Behind here, it's a uh, cucumber. And this cucumber is flowering all the way, you can see here. 
And this cucumber plant is a cross between uh, a red mong heirloom cucumber. I think they come from Vietnam or something. A uh, place around there. And uh, European seedless uh, cucumber. And here's one single cucumber forming. And this European seedless cucumber, I think they call them uh, burpless as well. Um, they only have female flowers. So uh, I had to cross the one I had with a red mung cucumber. And I was very curious if this new hybrid that I made, if it uh, would produce male flowers. But I was really lucky and it produces loads of male flowers and female flowers. So I got both kind of flowers on one plant and I'm very satisfied with that. Mm -hmm. um, this seedless European uh, cucumber, uh, as I said, they only have uh, female flowers. So uh, at the nurseries, they uh, treat the plants with, uh, I think it's uh, a silver solution. Uh, is it silver nitrate or something like that? Okay, I can't remember, uh, but it's a solution with silver, as I said. And they treat the plants with that, and then the, start, uh, the plant starts uh, producing male flowers as well. So you, they use pollen from uh, these male flowers to make new plants of them. I ain't so satisfied with using a um, chemical compound to make my um, plants produce male flowers. So I will rather use crosses. So the plant throws out both kind of kinds of flowers uh, the natural way. And here's a petunia. Uh, that's uh, an F1 hybrid. It's a cross I made last year. Dark purple flowers. And this is another kind of petunia. It's orange flowers on. And those two here I use as mother plants to take cuttings from and produce some more uh, plants for spring with the same colors on. Here you can see the cuttings from these uh, these uh, petunias and they're growing very nice. So later on today I'll maybe take these here out in the greenhouse and put them there so I can get some more space in here. And these cuttings here they are all from uh, this F1 crossing that I made between uh, Mennonite and Cherokee purple. So these are gonna be big slicers, all of them. As you can see here, my cuttings, uh, these are uh, suckers that I've taken from the mother plant and put down here. And I use quite small uh, cuttings because uh, when I grow them in these um, containers, they, they grow very well and get big in a very short time and put out roots. And in this one here, there's petunia cuttings. And they uh, also put out roots very fast. A week to a, a one and a half week. Then uh, I can put all these out in pots and uh, take them out of the containers. And behind here is my overwintering uh, tomato plants. 
as you can see I cut them down uh, each one and a half to 14 days I cut them down to the base uh, over one leaf and I then let them grow up again before I prune them again just to keep them low because uh, if I let them grow too much they take too much space in here but this is a nice way to keep them down and uh, you get a very branchy tomato plant and you can take all these new shots and use as uh, cuttings for new ones um, I'm gonna do that with some of them uh, and a few of them I'm gonna um, prune down so they only have a single stem and have them in my greenhouse and here is um, two mint plants that are growing like crazy so I need to <laughs> prune them and I'll be taking some new cuttings here as well and uh, put them in soil and then give to my neighbors and friends as well oh they smell very nice now this is uh, uh, I don't know the name of this one but it smells like uh, spearmint and this is a uh, lemon smelling mint it's very nice I tried both of them in uh, tea and that tastes very good both of them so I'll be cracking on with this pruning here They grow very fast. Oh, that looks nice. I think that's good enough for this one. We'll do the same with this. I'm sure the plant will like this. Yeah. Looks like that now. I can show you how I take my cuttings and make new plants of them. I'm just gonna place this away here. One. I'll take six cuttings of each. It's a really good smell in here now. And I'll pull off the lowest leaves like this. So I'll get leaves in the top.
it's not any magic with this, it's just fast forward. Okay, I'll clean the table here. I've hit some soil. I will use cups like this, plastic cups. I don't poke hole uh, with a nail or anything, I just make three slits in the corners. I don't know if you can see it here, and that's enough. And it goes very fast doing so. It's very seldom I use um, rooting hormone for my plants. Well, I'll poke three holes there with a pencil or screwdriver. And put down one cutting in each hole. Like this. And just press down gently. And the next step is to water them in. I always water twice. Like this. Now I've got a plastic cover over them and uh, that keeps in the humidity in uh, the air but also keep out the fungus gnats that can uh, destroy those first tender roots. On the underside here there's uh, some holes that I made so there is a little bit you know, airflow. So, this is how I do with these mints of mine. Well, I will put these uh, cuttings on a warm place because uh, it seems that they put out their roots faster when it's a good heat there. Yeah, I'll take and do the same on uh, the last six cuttings. So, until next time I see you guys, have a nice time, and I'll see you soon again. Bye.